All right, so a little project I want to do on the Veloster is upgrade to the 60 mil throttle body. Um, I did get a throttle body spacer, but I'm also going to drill and tap this port so that I can have the factory vacuum set up. Um, and I'm still going to use the throttle body spacer and the intake spacer. Now, uh, throttle body spacers and intake spacers don't really work on these newer cars. Um, there's lots of YouTube videos that have shown dyno tests with similar uh, size motors. They put them on. They don't do really anything. They do The throttle body spacer gives you a few extra ports uh, if you want to run meth or something like that. You don't you can do that but as far as actually performing any function as giving you more horsepower or anything like that um, it's a no so if you're buying them for that don't expect a whole lot um, there is a few things that I found out about these throttle bodies that are kind of interesting um, because Hyundai and a couple other manufacturers lots of them um, run coolant through them they heat up the throttle body uh, if you live in a cold environment that's a good thing because they help prevent de-icing but you know you're running a turbo car you have a big intercooler you run all your everything through the intercooler you get your air temps down and then this is your throttle body sitting at 160 degrees or 180 depending on whatever your thermostat happens to be so you're just heating the air right back up right before it enters the motor and it's taking power away. Now, I have seen just by taking the two lines off, um, people are dynoing about five horsepower more than with the coolant lines connected. So a uh, little bit better throttle response. You're not going to get a whole lot of horsepower because it's, you know what, not that much bigger than stock, but 60 mil, 60 mil. So you're getting a little bit better throttle response. Removing the, the heat from this is also going to give you five horsepower. So my car dynoed at uh, 232-something. I can't remember. We'll call it 233 just because, you know, I'll round up. Um, so if I get an extra five horsepower, so 238. Um, I also know that on the bottom of my intake manifold itself is a bunch of coolant lines that go to a thing that heats up the actual uh, intake part the plastic piece that goes from this to the motor so I'm going to be disconnecting those as well uh, when I do the throttle body spacer since I'm going to have it off uh, throttle body spacers are good like if you wanted to do some direct port injection and you don't have direct port injection you can inject it before uh, it goes goes into the motor that's what that's for um the bomba ones uh, i set them someplace i'll hone them down here in a second let's all right so here's the throttle body spacer it has one port on it uh it has an o-ring this goes same direction that it should be on the motor now the intake spacer for this particular car does not come ported um this is the 1.6 honda hyundai honda Hyundai one uh, does not come ported now I know that you can drill and tap these I've seen them drill and tap and I do know it's the Ford and a couple others come ported already so that you can do what you got to do so if you had the Hyundai and you wanted to do that you could definitely drill through have them ported and then that way you can run um, some in, some injection meth whatever um, right before the motor so that's that uh, like i said these really don't do much as far as power i've seen the dyno graphs uh, really you're going to get more power just removing the heat from this and maybe i'll get a few extra horsepower by removing the heat from the actual intake manifold itself we'll see um, once i get all that done the next step will be to install the fuel line and the um, dishworts fuel pump and uh, probably drop in the lap 3 in um, ECU 
and then take it back over to the dyno and see what we come up with. All right, uh, I'm working in the house because I got to be close to to the wife while she's uh, not feeling well. So to not make a big ass mess everywhere, I drop this into a box so that any shavings will stay hopefully in here. I am going to put some of this painter's tape on the inside uh, to help kind of collect any of the burrs that go down. I don't want to have to do too much cleanup, so I'm going to do that next. And then uh, we'll see about getting that drilled out. All right, that took about three, four minutes. Um, this was the drill bit that came in this particular kit that I'm using. It comes with the drill bit and the tap. So next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and tap that in. And uh, we'll see. go from there. All right, so... Next thing we're going to do is tap that hole with the supply tap. Got a 11.30 seconds. That fits over the square nut side. And we're going to do that. And when you do this, just take it slow and easy. Um, I do about two or three turns in, back it up a little bit, clear the, the burrs out of it, and do that again. Just kind of slow and easy. You don't want to go too fast and get it cross threaded or get a burr in there that screws up your new threads. All right, just like that, we have threads. And let me get the bung and see if it fits in correctly. All right, so I got this. Um, this is just a test fit. When I go to put it in for real, I will get some Teflon tape and make sure that seals nice. But. Perfect. Nice. All right. We are golden. So I'm going to hunt down some Teflon tape and get that in there. And then I will uh, try to get some time here in the next day or two to get this installed. All right. So Teflon tape is on. Uh, that is as tight as I can get it with my fingers. Uh, this particular one uses a 7 16 um, I bought a whole pack of these bar bins. Let's see if there's a part number in here somewhere. Maybe that. Um, picked this up. I think I got it off of eBay for like three bucks. Something like that. Wasn't very expensive. This is the Elantra GT 60 mil throttle body. Uh, you can buy them from a couple of different places. Uh, I got this one off eBay. Uh, I do know you can buy them from some import places. They'll charge you a few hundred bucks for them. Um, but it's basically the same part. And uh, if you shop around on eBay, nowadays you can get them stupid cheap uh, because inventory is back up. When I bought this, it was during COVID, so it was a little bit more expensive. So if you do some shopping, make sure you get the Elantra GT one. Uh, it should in the info sheet should tell you that it's a 60 mil bore if it doesn't say that keep looking and just like that it's snugged all the way down it clears so it's not sticking out the bottom here um, so everything's good no no um, burrs or anything left in here um, basically what i did is before i drilled it i stuck some painters tape in here made a little pocket so it was uh, had a place for the burrs to go and then I did the same thing up here at the top um, I just made like a cup of tape and just stuck it around there So it was big enough for me to get the drill bit in and all the burrs kind of stuck to the tape as they came off So I didn't have to make a big mess um, And I used the low speed on my drill so that it wasn't just flinging stuff um, Like I said, it took less than five minutes. It's like three to four minutes to drill it out so that's pretty easy. Now it's ready to go on the car. Um, and then there's a little bit of a procedure. And when I start to install it, we'll go over the procedure on how to sync this to your car. Just to cover this, I showed you that sticker, but there is the part number for this tap. If you want to use this particular size with that particular 
thread pitch, which is the same as that kit. So um, I believe this was 20 bucks. Um, I don't remember where I bought it. I can't find the paperwork on it. So it's either in all of my Veloster paperwork or I got it from eBay and they didn't send me a uh, packing slip invoice and it's no longer on my account because eBay, um, who knows? So that's that, but it's a fairly easy thing. Um, and now I have a tap and die for those if I ever need them or whatever. Um, so, like I said, I got my throttle body spacer and everything. There's the bolts for everything. Um, so, thanks for watching. All right. So, I just ran outside real quick and hit, it, hit these two with the angle grinder, cut them off. I'm going to take these flat file and uh, just clean it up a little bit. Sorry, I keep doing that. Clean up the edges, and then I've got this clear JB Weld epoxy I'm going to be putting in the holes and just kind of filling them up so that uh, they look nice and they won't get a bunch of crap inside of them so they look cruddy. Um, you don't have to do any of that. You could just put rubber caps over the end. But I want this clean, and since I'm going to be removing a bunch of rubber hoses anyway, I don't want clutter. So, less things in the way, the better. This is just a cleanup. This is a personal thing. Nothing more. All right. So, I used clear epoxy. It, I just put it on there. This is a uh, five-minute. So, it'll firm up here shortly. And we'll call that good. Um, I used some wax paper and this spoon to mix it and put it in there and that will make everything nice and clean and we're golden all right now we can move on